Welcome Welcome to to Revive Revive Online. Online. It's great to be with you this morning. We really hope you've been able to rest in some way in August and over the summer and also see some of your church family. You know, we're back with full services and Zoom coffee after that, after this, for those who want to connect and chat. So join us afterwards. September has arrived. School is back and we have a brand new series which we are really excited about and it's called What Good News. What Good News. We've all had to endure a pretty difficult season, haven't we? We know a lot of people dealing with some tough things, unexpected problems, illness, financial difficulties. And you look beyond our church family and all we seem to see is bad news. So we ask you the question, what What good good news? news? Can you see any good news in your life? Sometimes it's hard to even understand if the news we're hearing is good, is bad, is fake. It's all in the hearer as to what is good. Good news to one person, maybe bad news to another. One football supporter hearing their team won the match is good news, but to the opposing team supporter is bad news. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning that there is some good news. It's not that we have a COVID-19 vaccine, but we do have something that is good news for those that hear and believe. And this series, we want everyone listening to really gain a greater revelation and understanding of the Gospels or this good news of Jesus that we hear about in the Bible. We hope to answer a few questions that people might ask about God and Jesus, why he came, why did he die, and what does that mean for us here in 2020? I'm hoping this series can help you understand why, as Christians, we're able to rejoice in difficult times, to hold on even when the storms of life are raging around us, to keep hope when it feels like life is at its worst. So, talking of rejoicing in the midst of hard times, let's praise you know, praise Jesus by singing praise to the one who is worthy, who is this good news. I'm just going to pray and then we're going, to, we're going to go into some praise songs. Father, we thank you that we can join together in one place in our homes, Lord, uh, on, on, online today, God, to give you all the praise that you deserve, to hear about this good news that, we, uh, that you sent your son to come into this world, Lord, for us. And God, we just want to open ourselves up now to give you all the praise and gl- glory that you deserve as we sing these into songs now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living home. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory. And bear my shame. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my Lord. Death has 
Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on. We believe there is power in thankfulness and praise. With everything going on at the moment, we want to introduce you to our new regular slot, Good News, where we can celebrate the good news happening and be thankful for those things, big or small. Consider this an addition of a ray of sunshine to your week. And remember, in response, to praise Jesus from whom all good things come. That's right. The, things, the thing with this though is we need you. We need your good news stories. However big, however small, off the wall, simple, we wanna hear your good news. Yeah. Uh, you know, wherever you can, please film them and email them to us, uh, email the video. If, you're, if you can't do that, drop us a line and, uh, with, with your good news stories so that we can share it for you. You know, church doesn't work if we don't all contribute. This is a collaborative thing. And we need to hear your good news stories in the midst of trying time. So please take the time out. We'd really appreciate to send your stories. Send it over to office at revivechurch.uk. Here they are. Hey church, how are you doing? Wow, great to be back together again. Uh, you may remember the last time you saw me, we were just about to launch Job Club Online. What a time we've had since then. Awesome, absolutely awesome. We've done seven weeks, we've got one session left and we've got my area manager uh, coming this next one and a representative from Building Better Opportunities. <sighs> yeah, what can I say? The delegates have found it uh, really fantastic. They've loved it, they've engaged with it, they've been more focused than uh, perhaps when we do it in-house. Um, we, they've also re requested prayer on one-to-one -one basis. Uh, we've been signposting to our church every week. You can see we've got uh, Revived Church signs up there. Uh, we point to that. But it doesn't stop there. It's gone national. As far as I know to date, there are only two job clubs in the whole country, and that's in the northwest, that have done anything online. But they just had a meet-up, a get-together. Nobody has yet run a course online like we run here. Nobody's had a registration set up. That's been noticed by CAP head office. It's gone all the way to the top. And over the last couple of weeks, my area manager contacted me and we conducted an interview that lasted 22 minutes. That has now gone out to the to job clubs, managers all around the country. It's even in the CAP green room for training purposes. The pitfalls, the good things, what happened, how do we do it, of setting up and running Job Club Online. We're pioneering team. We've been doing it, pioneering for the last few years and we're still pioneering. And it doesn't even stop there. We've been recognized by the job centers of the work that we do in our community in the Peak District. You may have seen on the news yesterday or recently uh, that the Kickstart has been launched by the government to help young people from 18 to 24 year olds. We've been asked to conduct a mentoring circle, a virtual mentoring circle, and that's going to be running in the next few weeks, a three week session, which is kind of a snapshot 
of the job club to help these young people to get back into the workplace. Isn't that fantastic? Surely you want to be a part of that. It's great. You know, we've got more things to come. We've, we're thinking about cat money um, that will be launching over the next few months. Great things for the next year or so. Yeah, fantastic. Keep praying for us. We need your support. We need your help. Thank you. falls it won't prevail cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph my God will never fail oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord.
What is power? The ability to enforce your will? Brute strength? Intelligence? Innovation? Wealth? Influence? We strive for power in the halls of government. We work to expand our influence in the boardroom, the classroom. We struggle to lengthen our lives. Day in, day out, we toil to increase our wealth. But how much control do we really have? Our best laid plans can fall apart in an instant. Our most trusted technology can fail. Our hard earned investments can evaporate before our very eyes. And no matter how disciplined we are, our bodies grow old and frail. But we are not without hope. Even in our weakness, there is good news for all people, an eternal power beyond human understanding that can soften the hardest heart, heal the deepest wound, bring peace, even joy in any circumstance, and salvation to all who believe. That power is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the only power that lasts. So, what good news? We mentioned earlier that we're hopefully going to answer a few questions that people might ask about God and Jesus and what that means for us here in 2020. Some people in our post-truth era uh, would say that believing in a God who created the world and reading a book that we believe to be God's word or somehow think that because a man and his wife disobeyed what God said that it flung the whole of human history onto a path that meant we needed a saviour to reconnect us to this creator. That a child was born miraculously and grew up living in a perfect life, died, came back to life, this man who was fully man yet fully God, they think that somehow that's delusional. Okay, I understand when you say it like that, it does sound a little bit unbelievable. However, we want to show you in this series that this Jesus, this person we base our faith upon is not only worth believing in, he's worth living our lives for. Big claims, I know. And so these are the four questions we think that some, some people might be asking when we, when we got together. Is it too good to be true? I'm going to tackle that one today. Does God actually like me? Do we have the right perceptions of a God who's, who loves sent his son to die for us, or do we think he's angry at us? What did he die for? It sounds crazy that one man could die and in that act bring salvation for the world. What did he do it for? And finally, what's in it for me and what's in it for you? So is this good news we talk about too good to be true? Have you ever seen something in a shop? Now, I mainly shop on Amazon these days, so it doesn't happen that much. But before Amazon Prime existed, um, uh, you'd go into a shop and you see something that you know seems way too cheap. It must have been priced up wrong. I remember going to buy some, some trousers when I was a teenager. This was probably whew, late 90s, maybe early 2000s. And I had no idea about fashion then, and I'm not much better now, but Anyway, I found a pair of trousers that, in all honesty, looking back, could just be described as black waterproof trousers that were just, like, really baggy, like black bin bags on each leg. And at the time, I thought, these were a bargain. You know, as a young teenager with not a lot of money to spend, this was too good to be true. How could a shop be selling these trousers for so cheap? So, I bought them. A few years later, when I found them in my trouser drawer, I realized why they were so cheap and proceeded to use them as a bin bag. But you see, the gospels that we find in the Bible 
is such good news that has been, been proclaiming this message since Jesus came and it's been transforming lives ever since. You know, millions of lives have been transformed by this good news of Jesus and it's continuing to do so today. The word gospel is translated good news. Now, Andrew Womack, who's a, a Bible teacher, has described the gospel as the nearly too good to be true news. It is that incredible that it almost sounds implausible, but it's actually through faith and believing in Jesus, his death and resurrection, that we can be saved. Now you might be thinking, what do I need saving from? Well, let's stop talking about this good news and let's tell you what it is. The Apostle Paul, who God used to write a, a large chunk of the, the New Testament, which is the, the small bit at the end of the Bible, um, to different churches, and he, he wrote there to help them understand what this good news was. And he often, at the beginning of his letters, states that his mission, you know, his purpose, was to be sent to preach, to proclaim this good news. So let's look at what he says about it, so, you know, we as a church can, can also learn. Romans 5 Verses 6 to 11 says this. When we were utterly helpless, Christ, Jesus, came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed in his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we've been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. This passage of scripture takes what we see in the, the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the eyewitness accounts of Jesus, and summarize it for us so we can, we can understand it, so the church can take it. Now, if you aren't used to reading the Bible, that's okay. You know, we have to remember that these texts were written a long time ago in a different culture and context and language, which is why we have these varying translations, but the, the essence and the, the, the spiritual principles that are pulled out are still earth shatteringly amazing for you and I. So let's look at it. It says in verse six, we were utterly helpless. I think it's fair to say that the world we live in is not perfect, right? By any stretch of the imagination, you know, the sheer level of, of evil that takes place around the world and even in our own towns and cities is horrendous. We, as a, as a nation, as a world, we're broken. It was never meant to be that way. We see in, in John 10.10 10 and John 3.16 that God wanted the best for us. God desires that we experience an abundant life. This would include such things as love, peace, purpose, and fulfillment. He also desires that we experience both abundant life now with him but also eternal life with him. And there is a reason why people are so desperate for purpose and meaning in life, and that's because God created us to be that way, to be in relationship with him and also to be in relationship or community with others. And that's why God invented the church. But we have a problem. God did not create us to act like robots who would automatically love and have fellowship with him in return. He gave us a will and a freedom of choice. And therefore, not only do we have to have the ability to make good choices, we also have the ability to make bad choices, evil choices, and what the Bible calls sin. Each of us, unfortunately, is going to die physically. And after we die physically, we will face a judgment. You know, So we see that when we look at the condition of a person and the world apart from God, it's not looking too good. And we've all sinned at one time or another. And the penalty of this sin, the wrong stuff, is eternal death, which is separation from God for eternity. We also see that as a consequence of our sin, we will face God's judgment. So in our separation, 
there's nothing that we can do to bridge that gap. That gap is not just our own personal sin, but it's, it's corporate sin where things have been done wrong on a, on a group or even a national scale. So this separation is really bad news, but we're coming to the good bit, so stick with me. So we need a solution, and this is what God gave. This is God's solution. Let's go back to the scripture. And since we've been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. In spite of the fact we've turned our backs on God and disobeyed him, he's provided a solution so that we can know him personally. Now, please hear me. This is not some sort of formula that I'm describing here. This is Jesus. Someone who was fully man, fully God, being asked by Father God to give himself as a sacrifice in the most brutal and horrible deaths imaginable to make a way. The significance of this moment, which I believe to be at the centre point of history, that people were hoping for before and have been living in the victory of it after, is something that's going to continue to reverberate through time until Jesus returns. It's always been about him. You know, from creation through to him coming again. Jesus is there to be found in every book of the Bible. You've just got to look for him. Seriously, every book. Genesis, seed of the woman. Exodus, Passover lamb. Leviticus, high priest. Numbers, he is the rock. Deuteronomy, the prophet. Joshua, captain of the Lord of hosts. Judges, the great and final judge. I can, I can go on. Ruth, the Redeemer. Samuel, the Anointed One. Kings, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Every single book of the Bible is speaking of this one who will come and make a way. There is only one way that we can cross that gulf that exists between people and God. And that bridge is Jesus Christ. Through his death on the cross, God sacrificed his son to pay the price for our sin. Jesus conquered death and is the way for anyone to come to God. It's through Jesus that now we can have in, in verse 11, we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus has made us friends of God. You know, in Revive Church, we aren't here to convert people to Christianity. That is not what we're here for. You know, Jesus commissioned us, his church, to make disciples. Now, disciples, what is a disciple? Well, disciples are people who follow something or someone. There is no person, I think, that I want to follow other than Jesus. To follow someone often means that you're going somewhere. You know, follow isn't just standing next to someone. That's just waiting. You know, following means being able to be led on a journey. And we believe that journey of discipleship is what enables you to go from exper to go from experiencing and enjoying this incredible free gift of being friends of God, of being children of God, being adopted into his family, being co-heirs with Christ, into the fullness that God promises, that abundant life in, that we hear about in John 10.10. 10. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that believing in Jesus will solve all of your earthly problems. You know, often we find that being a disciple is hard. Jesus himself would speak of, of the truth and love that following him would not be easy. Just read Luke 9, 23 or Luke 14, 33 or the trials and tribulations of Paul in the book of Acts or the history of the persecution of the early church right up to the persecution of Christians and the church around the world today. You know, we said earlier on in the service that a lot of us are experiencing tough times, but we're able to rejoice in difficult times, to hold on during those storms of life, to keep hope. And the reason for that and what I can tell you is that when Jesus comes along, unveils his rescue plan and introduces all to, the, to this kingdom of heaven, not like any other earthly kingdom we have come across. When that perfect king loves an imperfect, rebellious people back into his perfect kingdom, then there's no going back. It's worth it all. 
You know, Jesus says, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. When you know Jesus and you, you know God, you'll never be the same. I like a song which says these lyrics, I've been ruined for this life ordinary. I've been captivated by a different kind of living. You know, one touch by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords will change your life forever. He takes us as we are, helps us get free from the burdens of this life, the hurt, the mess. He helps us rediscover who we are in him, what we were, we were created for, finding purpose in him so that we can live out all that he has for us as part of this wonderful community we call the church and truly to make making a difference. So what's our response going to be? Now Jesus had made it possible for us to cross over to God's side and experience the full life that he wants us to have, but we're not automatically on God's side. It takes a step of faith and through your faith in Jesus you can begin this amazing adventure. We must also repent, which it's probably a, a word some people don't like, but it literally means to change one's mind. You know, repentance involves recognizing that you've thought wrongly in the past and determining to think rightly in the future. You know, a, a new way of thinking about God, about sin, about holiness, and about doing God's will. So we talk about faith and we talk about repentance and, and repentance and faith are like two sides of the same coin. So what do I mean by that? It is impossible to place your faith in Jesus Christ as the saviour without first changing your mind about your sin and about who Jesus is and what he has done. Whether it is repentance from willful rejection or repentance from ignorance or disinterest, it is a change of mind. For us to be saved, we need to change our minds from rejection of Christ to faith in Christ. As I mentioned earlier, salvation is just the beginning of being a disciple. You know, as we go on this, this journey of faith, of, of repentance, you know, changing our mind, turning from our old ways, we find that in this, this new kingdom that we've been, uh, we've been bought into, we have a Lord and a King who is worthy of giving our all. You know, he paid the ultimate price for our freedom and he provides everything we need to be able to make a difference for him in this world. The instruction in uh, John 1.12 is that we must believe in him and receive him. And we do that um, from what Romans 10 verse eight and nine says, by confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. So often this, uh, this, expressed, this is expressed through prayer, us talking to God and expressing our belief in him. So if you ask me if there is any good news in the world today, I would say there's been good news in the world for every, everyone for the last 2000 years. A free gift that God provided that can't be earned or bought. It really is almost too good to be true. Yet, all it takes is some faith. This is good news. This is not just something that we hear. You know, we, we saw that video at the beginning based on Romans 1 verse 16. And you know, it's salvation. You know, the one overwhelming necessity for people who are in separation to God revealed in this, this good news, this gospel message, that God's own power to save every soul that embrace it, embraces it is possible. Thanks for listening, guys. I really hope you found that, that useful. And, you know, if you want to respond, you want to take what I've just, just said and respond to Jesus this morning, uh, click on the link. If you're watching live, there should be a, an interaction in the moment that's going to be coming up. If, you, if you're watching on Catch Up or on YouTube, Hit the link in the uh, the description and uh, yeah, find out more. I'm just going to quickly pray and then we're going we're gonna to carry on with our service. Father God, I thank you for being with us this morning, Lord. I really pray that every 
heart will be touched, every mind, that we would all change our minds, Lord, to you. And Lord, whatever faith we're able to muster this morning, Lord, we give it over to you. We thank you that you came, that you died and you rose again, Lord, to make a way for us, Lord, so that we could be in connection with you, that we can have abundant life here on earth and eternal life, Lord, with you forever. We just pray that every soul listening would be able to respond to you um, and we can't wait to, uh, yeah, to spend more time learning and growing on this journey of faith. In Jesus' name. God of mercy, please come rescue me. I am longing for your voice, gentle whisper in the noise. Father, tell me everything's all right. Your power and your presence break strongholds, King of heaven. When you speak, mountains move. I believe there will be Your presence 
it. We want to thank you for your faithfulness in giving over this difficult time. As you know, without your giving, we wouldn't be able to do the work we do here at Revive. We're trying to get church physically back together as soon as possible and staff back working fully as soon as possible. We have a good news message. We not only want to share, but to demonstrate in our actions as a church. And oftentimes this does cost. Later this week, you'll receive an email from Ben and I detailing the upcoming building refresh. This includes essential maintenance as well as a refresh. We want to be good stewards of all that God has given us, including our physical property. And we want this to be a place that is warm and welcoming when our guests enter, for it to reflect our heart in some small way. And it's your faithful giving that allows us to maintain the building, and we thank you for that. We want to ask this morning for those of you that are in a position to, would you consider giving to the work here at Revive? There is a common saying that you reap what you sow. We hear it all the time. And this principle is found in the Bible time and time again. We learn that when we give to God and to his work, he gives back to us. He even says to test him on this in Malachi 3.10. So we pray that God will meet your needs as you give in faith to help, the fund, help fund the work here at Revive. For those that are struggling financially, we have our emergency COVID-19 fund. So if you or someone you know is struggling, please reach out to us on office at revivechurch.uk. You can also give into this fund. It's our COVID-19 fund. So we're going to give you a minute now to give online and the links will follow. We thank you for all of your support. It's been so great to be back together, albeit still online, but what a great service. Thanks for joining us this morning. This week, if they haven't done so already, many of our children and our heroic teachers are returning to school. Uh, we met some of them this week over Zoom, some of the children, to chat and to pray for them. And we want to wish you all the best, same with you teachers. And we pray God will be with you, guiding you, that his protection will be upon you that you will shine brightly, lighting up those classrooms that you are in with the love and the light of Jesus. For the parents, we pray that you will settle it soon into a new routine and perhaps even find some more space to rest in Jesus. Perhaps after an initial period of kind of rocking in a quiet room. Uh, no? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please don't forget those good news stories and look out for a video message from us this week. If you're not signed up to receive our email updates, click this link. And for those of you that want to have some virtual coffee and community, although the coffee won't be virtual, just the community. <laughs> make that yourself. Um, make sure you have the Zoom app downloaded on your device, then click the Zoom link now where you'll enter into a rating room before being let in to connect with others. It'd be great to, uh, to see you there. Thank you all for being with us. It's been so great to be back together and we just pray God's blessing on you this week. See you later.